I am Chandana, UG student from MS Rama University of Applied Sciences, currently a project trainee at Leo's ISRO, along with my co-authors, is honored to present our work scripted on the data analytical aspects of the novel optical spectroscopy technique. This technique is popularly known as LIPS, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, which is a versatile and promising atomic emission spectroscopy technique for sample elemental composition studies. As seen in this video, principally in this technique, a high energy focused laser pulse flashing in red color creates a highly luminous hot plasma plume, which is collected by means of a spectrograph, wherein response is registered as a function of wavelength or frequency, which is generally termed as the spectrum that you can see on the right hand side figure. The peak wavelength of the spectrum is used to detect the element present in the sample, while the intensity or the area under the curve is used to quantify the identified element. If you look at the entire sequence, starting from the laser ignition till the spectrum generation, you might be wondered to note the typical acquisition time of this entire process. To your information, this entire process takes place only in a few microseconds, which is uh, compared to long exposure hours of conventional techniques. Owing to this rapid, simultaneous and multi-element detection capability of LIPS, it has found diverse applications in both pure and applied research on ground. Surprisingly, in recent times, it has spread its wings to expand its applications even on the space for planetary surface composition studies of neighboring celestial bodies. The first instrument that was built on this technique was flown to Mars by NASA on Curiosity rover, and second time it was flown to Moon in Chandrayaan 2 by ISRO. At this juncture, I am delighted to convey that the set of investigations and the data sets that was used for our paperwork were generated using an equivalent instrument that was flown in Chandrayaan 2. In this slide, I am showing the test setup that was used to perform investigations. This black box on the top right corner is the LIPS instrument that can update the sample as well as collect the plasma emission. The left portion of the snapshot consists all the necessary interface modules and acquisition system. The gray colored sample pellet that is seen beneath the instrument is the sample which is typically kept at a height of 200 mm. Chandana, can In you explain video, the setup here? Uh, what is the setup here? Yes, the experimental main, setup. Uh, what are this, the instruments uh, and uh, what are the what are their functions? Can you just uh, brief them a little bit? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is the black box is the main spectrograph instrument, uh, which has focusing unit and collection unit, which is made of optics. The focusing unit is used to focus the laser on the sample and collection unit collects the sample, which is coupled with the CCD detector. This is the interface which acts uh, test console unit, which acts as the interface between the data acquisition system, uh, two powering systems and the spectrograph unit. Uh, the resulting spectrum is obtained using the LIP software in this data acquisition system software. Uh, this is the two powering supply unit. So they're basically power supplies, which are in the bottom. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. In this uh, video clip, you can visualize the formation of the white loud of plasma plume on the sample as a result of laser ablation. In our experiments, we have used standard and certified reference geochemical soil powders and pure metal samples to perform experiments in high vacuum environment at ambient temperature. We have performed experiments using two kinds of samples. The first one is soil powder pellet samples and the second is hard, hard surface pure metal samples. Here the overlap lip spectra of all the four samples where sample one and three correspond to soil powder pellet samples and sample two and four corresponds to hard metal pellet samples. We have found that the plasma emission spectrum obtained from the soft powder pellet samples uh, comprises narrow and intense peaks, while that obtained from hard metal pellet samples comprises broad, super intense and low intense line signatures. In high vacuum environment, we can expect a mixture of different kinds of peaks. Therefore, one of the primary challenges of lip spectral analysis is to address this spectral peak overlapping issue because how one can well resolve this issue decides the ultimate accuracy of lips element detection capability. In our work, we have addressed this issue by following a two-step approach. 
In this slide, I'm showing the realized algorithm flowchart of this two-step approach. The first step approach is aimed towards the local maxima position finding, while the second step is aimed towards the global curve fitting on the measured data. The chain one is initiated by loading the data file and subsequent plot generation. However, prior to plot generation, our coding logic will verify the data file type compatibility to run this logic. If the data file type is processed one, the chain initiates finding local maxima by directing the logic to two different channels having two algorithms, namely PQTIS and SciPy libraries of Python. The PQTIS library computes local maxima based on two parameters called the threshold and minimum distance, whereas SciPy requires three additional parameters along with this width, prominence, and height. The peak finding chain is triggered with the assignment of values for the parameters of these two algorithms and generates the output files if the output is valid. The validity of output is verified by checking for false peaks. If the output is not valid, the chain loops back to reassignment of parameter values until the output valid is obtained. The chain 2 logic, which is meant for global curve fitting, is initiated by the output of chain 1 logic. Here we have performed diverse trade off simulations by employing two standard conventional spectroscopy line shape functions, Lorentzian and Voigt. Based on plasma dynamics in high vacuum, we have extended our coding simulations by employing two additional line shape functions, split Lorentzian and pseudo Voigt. All these four functions have three primary parameters in common, which is wavelength tolerance, amplitude, and full width at half maximum. Our logic will verify the goodness of fit by checking the COD values R square and adjusted R square. If the COD value R square lies in between 0.75 and 0.99 and the adjusted R square is close to R square, the coding logic accepts the goodness of curve fitting and generates the desirable output file format and plots. Based on this realized logic, we have developed a code code on Python platform and perform diverse trade-off simulations for the effective mitigation of spectral peak overlapping and unambiguous estimation of true peak centers. In this slide, I'm presenting the output of chain one logic with respect to finding of local maxima position. We have performed simulation on different kinds of uh, samples such as raw datasets, denoise datasets, and denoise baseline corrected datasets. The plot you can see on this slide is Lips emission spectra of sample 1 that is resulted from denoise and baseline corrected data sets, where blue squares and red circles correspond to the local maxima positions obtained from PQTIS and SciPy. We observed that the application of both the libraries were effectively found the local maximum. However, as you, you can see in this inset figure, the SciPy was able to detect the hidden peaks. We have further extended our simulations on DBD datasets of all four samples, and we have plotted this horizontal bar plot of number of peaks with respect to PQTIS and SciPy. This brown color bar are the uh, result of the application of SciPy shows additional number of peaks. This attribute is mainly due to the algorithm parameter of SciPy, which is called the prominence. Once the local maxima positions were accurately found, I am using these values to initiate the curve fitting chain as initial guess values to serve the purpose of effective global curve fitting. The left side layer plot shows the global curve fitting of sample one lip spectrum, where all colored line profiles shown in red, blue, green, and purple colors are the theoretical fit traces obtained from Lorentzian, split Lorentzian, Voigt, and pseudo Voigt line shape function. The code developed for this purpose was found to effectively fit the global lip spectrum. However, to know the goodness of fit values, we have extended our code to compute the values of CODs for all the four line shape functions. The right side spider plot shows the COD values and the resulted COD values are in the range of 0.96 to 0.99 for all four functions. Here we have literally faced a challenge in selection of the best line shape function to address the global curve fitting of lip spectrum. Therefore, we have further extended our coding simulations to compute the output parameters of curve fitting such as peak centroids, full width at half maximum, and peak areas. The plot on the left hand side is the 3D scatter plot of peak centroids versus peak numbers for four curve fitting line shape functions as a function of three sigma ranges. 
to our surprise in this situation too we found that all four line shape functions are resulting similar peak centroid values within plus or minus 0.6 nanometer which is considered well within the instrument's resolution based just on two peak center values it may not be wise for us to select the best line shape function for addressing lift spectrum in high vacuum environment therefore we have considered other output parameters such as fw hm and p areas and we have found that lorentzian and pseudovert can be regarded as the best suitable line shape function to address lift spectrum in high vacuum at this point we have further extended our curiosity to know which is best among lorentzian and pseudovert and for this purpose we have done a small exercise to calculate the difference between local maxima and true peak centers obtained from lorentzian and pseudovert line shape function here the blue bars represent the difference between local maxima position obtained from sipi and the true peak center values resulting from lorentzian function whereas the red color bars represent the difference between local maxima and true peak centers of pseudovert line shape function as you can see in this plot the regions which are showing minute differences are due to the narrow intense peak while the regions which are showing huge differences are due to broad and low intense peaks of the spectrum we have continued such trade off simulations for samples spectrum of other samples too and the performed trade off simulations indicated the better edge of pseudovert line shape function in comparison to the lorentzian based on these trade performed trade off simulations we were able to consolidate the optimized value ranges for algorithm parameters of both peak finding and curve fitting logic this table shows the consolidated values for parameters of both peak finding and curve fitting the left side table shows the optimized value ranges for peak finding for both function sipi and peak utils while this table on right hand side shows the optimized value ranges for all four curve fitting line shape functions lorentzian split lorentzian void and pseudo void we confidently convey that any lip spectrum captured in high vacuum can be effectively analyzed by applying sipi logic with any one of these curve fitting line shape functions by using the optimized parameter value ranges with this confidence we further progress the efforts in development of gui tool for the real time peak analysis the left side figure is the snapshot of main screen window of the gui tool which is named as qfit curve fitting tool this allows the user to initiate the peak identification logic followed by curve fitting and centroid computation logic the two figures on the right hand side shows the processing gui windows for peak identification and curve fitting which has all uh, features explained in the algorithm flow chart coming to the last but important part, part of our presentation the conclusion summary as i had conveyed in the beginning this paper work mainly sheds light on the effective mitigation of spectral peak overlapping issue in lips technique we have performed experiments by using standard reference geochemical samples in high vacuum environment under ambient temperature for the adapted two step approach we have developed the code using python platform and perform diverse trade off simulations by employing suitable algorithms for peak finding for finding the local maxima position and unambiguous true peak center estimation by means of effective global curve fitting we have found that the best algorithm for peak finding is sipi whereas for curve fitting it is either lorentzian or pseudovert line shape function combined with linear model offset Our coding simulations have resulted COD values greater than or equal to 0.95 with peak centroid values within plus or minus 0.6 nanometer tolerance. Finally, we were able to develop a GUI tool for real-time spectral analysis of LRBS and simultaneous generation of output statistics. This is our team on right hand side. We are delighted to present our work in such a prestigious conference. and on behalf of all our team i would like to thank each and everyone for giving us this opportunity once again thank you one and all thank you chandana for your presentation on the experimental work you have conducted at leos uh, participants you. do you have any questions for chandana hello 
Uh, how are the samples uh, selected for you to take? You have just chosen just four samples for your evaluation. Is there any can methodology you used for? Can you please introduce yourself and then ask the question? Yeah, I am. I am Professor Mahadevan. Yes. I am an ex ex Israel and also a professor from PUC University. Okay. Okay. Say, so my question is: the samples which they have selected. Yes. What is the rationale for choosing some samples, or is it just random? We have. out of this presentation we have conducted experiments on many kinds of samples but to study the plasma emission spectrum difference between so soft powder pellets and metal pellets we have chosen two soil powder pellets and two metal pellet samples uh, chandana uh, just uh, madam with your permission can i comment yeah sure 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 yeah so this is before you yes please. yes yes i am introducing madam myself first either first author of this paper and even the uh, team lead of this instrument which was built in leos okay uh, uh, to with respect to professor mahadevan square sir actually the samples we have we have we are having plenty of samples almost 60 samples ah. which mimic which mimics the planetary surface uh, composition especially like moon or mars yes so we have, we have procured them then we have made, made them as a pellets and powders mm. and whatever she, she is presenting only few of the samples she is presenting but the work has done on almost 60 kind of samples oh yeah so this, no, this is a summary of what presented actually yeah so you selected out of that 60s a few representative ones for your actual final uh, report no, no no for this paper work we have selected some few 10 samples no, to show fine. that yeah diverse kind of uh, estimations okay it's more like a student project you have done yeah out of 60 10 samples we have given to them and asked to study the kind of uh, spectrum dynamics what is happening in vacuum yeah. Suppose if it may be metal surface, it may be powder surface, it may be pellet surface also. Yeah. So yeah, based based on a function of surface, how the spectrum is changing, and what kind of parameters values we have to feed them to treat all kind of sample spectra. That is a goal given to them. Yeah. So Thank that's why they. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Sir. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you so uh, much. Another question. Uh, what What is the necessity to conduct in a vacuum environment? Uh, yeah. F finally, madam, this uh, we have to uh, send this instrument to space conditions. Finally, we have to fly to celestial bodies like Moon or Mars. Okay. where the uh, where the ambient pressure temperature is not existing so that's why we have to conduct experiments literally in high vacuum only and okay. basically lip spectrum is different completely from ambient to high vacuum so oh, target is to address spectrum in high vacuum what kind of signals we will expect and what kind of algorithms we have to use and correct it that is the main oh. thing okay okay yeah. okay thank you chandana uh, thank, thank you sridhar also for that thank you thank, thank you very much ma'am thank you okay Uh, so we, I call upon the next uh, paper author.